Did you know that by going to my local library, I save thousands of dollars every single year? And no, it's not just on books. So I wanted to show you exactly what the library offers, because if you haven't been there in a while, you may not know, and you may be missing out on saving a ton of money. So I wanted to share all the things that may be available at your local library that you can start taking advantage of today. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm a blogger at The Frugal Ginger. I love sharing money-saving tips to help you run your family and your finances more effectively and efficiently. If that's something that you want to learn more about, make sure to subscribe below. And you can also check out my blog for even more tips at frugalginger.com. And today I wanted to just go over everything that the library has that you may not be taking full advantage of, which you should because your taxes are paying for the library. So let's make sure that we take full advantage of it to help you save as much money as possible. Now I'm not just talking about books. Yes, the library has books, you know that. I'm talking about all kind of other things that yours may have. And before we like jump all into this, I just wanna say that each library is gonna be different. Now the bigger the city you live in, probably the more resources your library has and the more things that you can be able to get. And those of us that live in small towns, we may not be able to have those same kind of services or resources, but I just want to go over everything because you never know. Always check your library website. The things I like taking advantage of and looking at on the website are the event calendar, the resources, and the services page. So go look at all that, see what yours has to offer. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do like a really quick walk through step-by-step -step tutorial about how you can find things that you're looking for, uh, like certain books or video games or DVDs, whatever. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that at the end, so stick around for that. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to kind of show you that the library has is in addition to the hard books that you can read and actually feel and get your hands on, they also have eBooks and audiobooks. So I know a lot of people like having these on hand because you can read them on the go. They don't take up a whole lot of space if you're traveling. So in addition to actually having physical audiobooks that you can get at your local library, they also have um, ones that you can download and you'll have access to these through certain sites. A lot of libraries are in partnership when, with one called Overdrive. So you'll go to the Overdrive app or website, and this is where you will pretty much just download any of the eBooks or audiobooks that you want. Now the thing with the eBooks and audiobooks, even though it is digital, you may still have to request a hold if um, they're checked out. Certain libraries only buy a limited amount of copies of digital products. So you may have to wait for those if they're all checked out, just like you would a physical book. Another thing that you may be able to get at your library are movies and TV shows. So the actual library branch will have the physical DVDs and Blu-ray copies. And they're usually like the latest movies that came out, the ones that are big blockbuster hits. Not just, you know, PBS and Masterpiece Theater shows, even though those are good, I know some of us still want to see the latest Oscar winners or the, um, you know, big summer blockbusters. So the library has those. The only thing is that if they just came out, you obviously will probably have to be patient and put a hold on it. But you can also get some movies and TV shows that you can download. Most libraries will use services like Hoopla or Canopy. Now, I prefer Hoopla because I think that has the most variety. Um, Canopy is kind of more, I don't know, documentaries and kind of indie films. There are some on there that I've seen in the movie theaters, but not as much that's on Hoopla. So I kind of recommend starting with Hoopla first, just see if they have anything that you may want. So to get access to these sites, you're going to need your library card number or email that you signed up with with your library card and a password. You will obviously have all this stuff once you sign up for your library card, but Hoopla has audiobooks. They have all kinds of movies. 
so you can just scroll through see if there's anything that you like you can also search by category what i also like about hoopla is they have music albums they have a bunch of different genres to pick from things like taylor swift even the frozen 2 soundtrack your kids are into that they've got the latest justin bieber album that just came out they also have a ton of soundtracks as well if you really like soundtracks but they also have Lizzo and Elton John. I mean, just a bunch of different genres for everybody. They also have comics. So this is a great way if you're really into comic books. They have a ton of comics. They've got The Witcher, um, DC Marvel, Lock and Key. If you haven't seen Lock and Key on Netflix, I really recommend it. It's really good. And then of course they have TV shows. So this is where you would go. They've got Paw Patrol, a bunch of BBC series, and they even have fitness DVDs on here or fitness programs because it's not an actual DVD you're downloading it but you can just see all the stuff that they have just kind of scroll through and you can even search by categories and then you can see all the categories that they have I mean there's Nickelodeon there's PBS there's teen TBS Sesame Street you know you can even have language learning programs so just Look through here and see if there's anything that interests you and you can always download it. You can download up to five titles a month and the count starts over the first of every month. So in addition to finding music on Hoopla, you can also find music on, I think it's called Free Gal Music. Um, a lot of libraries use this program as well. So you can download even more music <laughs> albums on that one. And you can use all of these programs at once so just because you can download five things off hoopla and then you can also download i think it's five on canopy as well and then all of these other things so you're not just limited to five altogether it's just five per month on that certain um, site so in addition to the music the dvds blu-rays um, digital movies and tv they also have video games now this is coming really handy for me because Aria, my daughter, got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas and those games are expensive. I think, you know, the average game for a Switch is around $60. So what I've done is I went in to our library and saw that they had video games for every console. There were PS3 games, Nintendo Switch, Wii's, Xbox, pretty much everything. Now with video games, libraries mostly just have one copy per game, maybe two. So they will probably be checked out when you go to look. But what you can do is always just put a hold on it. And when it comes back around, you'll be the next in line. My library, we're able to keep them for a full 30 days, just like we would a book. So it gives her plenty of time to play the game. And also since she's just six years old, um, she can lose interest in a game kind of easily. So instead of spending $60 on a game that she may play for a month or two, we just get them for free from the library. She plays it and then she's kind of over it by then anyway. And then we just send it back. So another thing that the library has are these free events. Like I said, go to your library's website and look at their event calendar. Um, you'll be surprised at all the different kind of things they have. This is especially great in the summer and during spring break when you're just trying to find ways to get the kids out of the house without spending any money. Um, they'll usually have all kind of different crafts or DIY events. Ours has make your own slime. They'll have some kind of holiday craft that the kids can do. This is also a great way to learn a new skill. They may have different classes like language classes, uh, knitting or crocheting. I've also seen some like community events that they'll put together if you're wanting to learn a new language and have a conversation. And where we used to live, they would have this for all kinds of languages, Spanish, Arabic, uh, Mandarin, English, you know, this is a great way to go and kind of just practice. They'll also have services for tutoring. So if you need homework help or your kid needs homework help or they need a tutor, look on the website, see if they offer those kind of services. And some libraries even have online tutoring. 
So you can find that in kind of the resources or services section of the, web of the website. And as I'm filming this, this is tax season. I know it's dreaded tax season, but if you make under a certain amount of money, I believe it's $56,000, then some libraries will offer free tax services and filings. Now this is only on certain days and times. They may have a tax professional there that can help you. So that's definitely something you wanna look into. Another thing that they have are historical and genealogical, is that a word? Genealogy uh, records. So if you are really big into genealogy, you're trying to make a family tree, they have a lot of the local um, genealogy records that you can access for free. You don't have to pay for ancestry.com or any of that. Um, the ones that they have usually are local, so they're not going to be from another country or anything, but it's a good place to kind of start your search if you're wanting to look into that. Some libraries have this um, available all the time, where others have it on certain days and times, they'll actually have someone there that can help you, so you might want to check your website for that. Another great thing is online classes, so if you don't want to go to your local library branch, you want to do everything online, you are more than welcome to. A lot of libraries may ha have access to Mango, which is a language learning service. Um, you can do, I think they have 70 different languages on this, so you don't have to go out and buy Rosetta Stone. You can just sign up for that. They also have lynda.com. You can find all kinds of different topics and things if you want to learn, like accounting. Um, they have photography and camera gear classes, marketing, business, entrepreneurship, design if you want to learn about graphic design. And I mean, the list just goes on and on. So that's definitely something that you want to look into if you're wanting to learn a new skill. Another thing that libraries can offer, especially the bigger city libraries, are free admission or discounted admission to different local attractions. This is mainly like museums, maybe some historical sites that you might want to go to. They're called Discover and Go Passes, and all you'll do is just go in and request the pass for whatever um, museum or attraction you want to go to. Okay, now some of these other things are pretty cool, and they will vary from library to library, but you can actually borrow different physical items like an American Girl doll. Those suckers are expensive. I think the typical price for an American Girl doll is maybe 120, maybe. Uh, but some libraries actually have them and they'll let little girls or little boys come and borrow them for a month. Now the only thing about this, is you have to make sure that your child is responsible. They're going to take really good care of it because if it's damaged in any way or it gets lost, you're gonna have to pay the total value of that doll. So just remember that before you do it. Some libraries even offer makerspace hours. So I know that one uh, closer to where we used to live, it would have certain times on certain days where you could go to the library and you could use a 3D printer, you could use a wood carver and a vinyl cutter. So like a Cricut or a Silhouette if you're crafty and you just don't want to spend two or three hundred dollars on a new Cricut maker or a silhouette, you can just go to the library and do your craft there. And a lot of libraries have tool lending programs. So if you are doing a project, you might need a tool maybe once or twice a year, but it's not really worth buying. You can go and borrow one for the library. Uh, for most, it will probably You'll probably be able to keep it around five to seven days and then you need to take it back. And just like the American Girl doll, you know, if you ruin it, you'll probably have to pay the entire cost of the item back. And if you are late, there are fees involved that are much more than being late on a book. But for example, the Oakland Library had a whole bunch of uh, power tools, uh, power saws, roofing, <laughs> roofing tools, and even, in, and even stuff for your garden. So that's definitely something to look into so you don't have to go out and spend money on something you may 
just need to use one time. Okay, so now I just wanted to do a little walkthrough on a library website to show you how to find things and put things on hold. Um, some people may not know how to do that, so I'll do that really quick. Now, you will need a library card and probably a PIN number, and you'll probably get all that information when you sign up for your card. And when you create your account on the library website, you'll probably have to specify how you want to be contacted. So for me, I did text messaging. It's just easy, the easiest for me. But you can also be contacted by email and probably mail too. Because when you put something on hold um, for my library, when it's in, they will send me a text, say, hey, come pick it up. You have five days. Otherwise, it's going to go back into circulation. So I know that I have five days to go pick up my item. And a lot of people don't know that just because your library doesn't have something doesn't mean that they can't get it. They use what's called interlibrary loan. So for example, the county will have like a headquarters, but it will have other different branches of the library throughout the county. So all those branches can get books and video games and DVDs, all that stuff from each other. So just because it's not available at your library doesn't mean that you can't get it. So basically you are just gonna go to your library's website and you're gonna look for something like this, like search catalog. And say we want to look for um, a video game for my daughter. So I'm just gonna put in Nintendo Switch video game. All right, and this is what it's going to bring up. So these are all the Nintendo Switch games that they have and it, it keeps going. But let's say that we wanted this Spyro game. So it tells you all the information here is a system availability is one of two. So there's one available that we can go get, but we have to see exactly where it is. You can just click on availability and it's available at headquarters. So let's say that I live closer to this one, the Middle Tiger branch, and I don't wanna drive all the way to the headquarters. So I'm just gonna go over here to place request. And then you'll see here, it just says to enter your library card or username and your pen, and you'll log in. And then all you'll hit is place request. And they'll, like I said, they'll send you a text message or an email when it's been sent to your location or it's ready for you to come pick up. So like for this one, it says there's zero available, but there's already two holds on it. So you can go ahead and still place a request. You'll just be number three in line since there's already two people ahead of you. But since there's two copies, it probably really won't be, but maybe a week or two because this is already transferred. So one person is already gonna get that and this is due back on March 6th. So you may have to wait two or three weeks maybe if they don't bring it back sooner because um, you'll probably be waiting on this person to bring it back first. But that's basically all it is. I mean, it's super easy. You just go place a request on anything you want, video games, books, movies, DVDs, and that's it it's super easy all right so that's it i hope you found this video helpful i hope you learned a few things that your library might have definitely go and check out their website make sure you're taking full advantage of it and make sure to subscribe below if you want to see more videos like this and i will see you next time